If you're watching this video, it's because you've searched what is multiple dwellings relief or that this video has popped up in your YouTube feed. And if you're about to purchase or indeed have purchased a property like this and it contains one of these, then you could save or get a refund of thousands of pounds from HMRC. And I'm about to explain how. Multiple dwellings relief, sometimes known as MDR, as its acronym, is a relief given to anybody who purchases a property that consists of two or more dwellings. And it's generally referred to as granny annex relief, but it can cover any kind of dwelling that has, funnily enough, two or more dwellings in it. If you think in terms of annex, staff accommodation, cottages, basement flats. These are all kinds of multiple dwellings if they come with, a, with the larger property. The details of what qualifies as an additional dwelling in the normal residential sense is generally what we've just said, an annex. But many larger rural properties often come with cottages, stable block or staff accommodation, Indeed, we've even seen some very expensive houses in Surrey that have one or two staff flats over the garages. So it's important to look at the structure of the building and whether these are capable of being separate in order to qualify. Now, what's not readily appreciated is, is that when you pay stamp duty on a property like this, on average, only one in four of properties that are eligible for the relief actually have it claimed. It's missed many, many times by solicitors and conveyances. This has led to a growing claims industry and indeed they're in the backbone of the SDLT refunds industry in recent times. But why would you expect your solicitor to spot it? You're not hiring them as tax experts, you're hiring them to deal with your purchase and it's although it's entirely within the scope of their duty to do so you shouldn't just rely on the fact that they give you a stamp duty figure to ensure that it's correct indeed hmrc's online calculator is not actually a calculator it's actually only a rough estimator and it doesn't take into account the existence of multiple dwellings they themselves say it's actually an estimator and you're supposed to do it yourselves. So it's important to know what the telltale signs are in a property that might be eligible for multiple dwellings relief and what qualifies as multiple dwellings. The law in this area is in Schedule 6B for NANSAT 2003 and it provides four things that count as a dwelling, which is a building or part of a building that is suitable for use as a dwelling or a building or part of a building that is in the process of being constructed or adapted for use as a dwelling. Land that will form part of the garden of grounds goes with that dwelling. Land that is to subsist for the benefit of a dwelling also counts as a dwelling. And in the larger scheme of things, buildings that are to be converted, where conversion has not commenced, where substantial performance has occurred prior to completion of contract also count for multiple dwellings relief. And I'm not going to go into the latter two parts because that's more about the deep dive for developer and investors, which is going to be a forthcoming video. But let's just deal with the basic house. In order for there to be a separate annex or other dwelling, the buildings have got to be dwellings in their own right. That is to say, they've got to have facilities for cooking and preparing food, They've got to have a bathroom. They've got to have a toilet. They've got to be suitable for human habitation. Revenue guidance says that they have to be separable. That is to say they can have a connecting door, but it must be lockable. They don't have to be on separate titles. They don't have to have separate utilities, but again, the utilities should be capable of being individually isolated between the two dwellings. So think circuit board, breaker box on the wall. All in all, therefore, there is no single factor which will either create or exclude a secondary dwelling. And you have to look at the building in detail. Plans are great, photographs are better. And that's what you need to support a claim to multiple dwellings relief. So now that I've explained what multiple dwellings relief is, let's go into action mode. And that's all a question of time. Now, if you've purchased a property in the last 12 months, you can amend your return and reclaim the overpaid SDLT from HMRC. And if you're about to purchase, I would recommend that you make the claim rather than pay it now and try and get it refunded later. Remember, you only have 12 months. 
to make that amendment for multiple dwellings relief on, on a main home. Interestingly, a lot of people feel that it's easy to do a reclaim and provided you follow the rules and they're quite strict and send all the correct documentation into HMRC, you should get a refund. But we found many people trying to do it on their own, making basic mistakes and as a result, having their claim ruled out. Ultimately, this is an expert tax area and wouldn't you rather have an expert tax specialist like Cornerstone do the reclaim for you, giving you as near to possible a guarantee of an outcome. Let me, for example, give you a case in point. We were approached by a client a couple of months ago, tried to do his own reclaim, hadn't done it right, the revenue had not exactly been helpful, and he came to us and said, look, I don't think my claim's going anywhere. We offered to get in, sort it out, Two letters to the revenue, two months later, client got his refund, £47,000. And I think it's important. You could do it yourself. You could ask your accountant to do it, but he's not a specialist either. We've done over 800 reclaims in the last 12 months from HMRC in all areas, but a lot of them in this one. And we've not had a single claim refused. So if you want to make sure that you're getting the right relief at the point of purchase, or that your refund has a higher probability of success, then feel free to contact us. You could be sitting there thinking, I know someone who could benefit from this advice. And if you do refer a friend or colleague and we're successful in obtaining a reclaim or giving the advice, we will give £250 to a charity or community organisation of your choice. And here's one we've done recently where we were able to benefit a children's hospice. We really believe in supporting local community associations and local charities, particularly in the post-pandemic era because they've been starved of funding during the course of the crisis. Now, if you've not yet purchased a property, I would recommend getting in touch with us before you complete your purchase so we can advise you on the availability of the relief and the likelihood of the successful chance of a claim. And if you've bought in the last 12 months, time to dig out that completion statement and those sale particulars send them through to us and we'll let you know whether you've got a chance to get a refund. Now, hopefully you've found this video educational. I'd really appreciate it if you tick the like button and subscribe so you can receive further updates and more videos from Cornerstone Tax. I've been David Hanna. Thank you for listening.